<clears throat> the views and opinions expressed in this podcast do not necessarily reflect those of any major corporation whatsoever. Well then, Bunapalooza, you're Bunapalooza, you're a legendary music festival. Yes. No. It's homework time once again here on the old Pope Film Podcast. <clears throat> People of the internet, your attention, please. Kindly put down those memes and pay attention. <laughs> Each week, the Pope on Film podcast, that's us, assigns homework in the hopes of bettering its listeners, nay, North America. Yes. Screw you, South America. We're making North America great again. Yes. That, that, that would be Managa. <laughs> that sounds vaguely racist. Yes. And or this something week, from a Blade movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, like that weird one with Triple H. Yes. And this week, our homework is simple, easy, almost retro. We're not reading a lengthy business magazine article. We're not watching some old monster movie. We're not ripping some old educational video that no one remembers in a sad attempt to mystery science theater the place up. No, yeah. this week we're discussing the first three episodes of a TV show, specifically the NBC comedy The Good Place. In which Reverend Steve will need to explain to me exactly why he loves it so much. Well, well, well before we discuss the show, okay. I want to talk a little bit here about firsts. First. First. Because Bun Spacito, you're now the you're no longer a legendary music festival. Now you're the song of the summer. Okay. There they there are a lot of sentences that I have never said out loud before. These are things that I have never said. Yeah. I have never said out loud. Like like here's a sentence that I have never said out loud before. Hey, father, I just licked an, a Hungarian fly fisherman. <laughs> That's a sentence that I've never said before. Just the hey, father makes it rare. Yeah. Let alone. So he never, licking... he never gave you the fly fisherman talk? No, no. And also, I wasn't allowed to call him father. <laughs> But yeah, not not just licking a fly fisherman, but a Hungarian fly fisherman. That's a sentence that I have never said out loud before. That it, that was a first. Yeah. Here is another first, a sentence that I have never said out loud before. Hey, Gene, I bet Donald Trump's balls smell like fresh potpourri. I have never said that out loud before. Have I said it? I'm, no, I'm, I'm not. I, 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 we would have to dig through the archives to be sure on that one. Well, have I said it out loud? No. Have I thought of it? Hell yeah. I think everyone's thought of how President Trump's balls smell. I bet they smell <laughs> sweaty. I think everybody has gone through that. Just laying in bed at night going, hmm, I bet they smell like. Fresh popcorn. <laughs> Thanks. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Sorry, Jeannie. Uh -huh. Thank you. Thanks so <laughs> much. Here's another sentence. Here's another sentence that I have never said out loud before. Gee, Kanye West sure is acting very quiet and reserved today. <laughs> In fact, not only have I never said that out loud before, I'm pretty sure that sentence has never been said, period. Yeah. So that's an historic moment. Well, you know, related to that, uh, something some nobody ever says is, you know, Kanye West may have a point. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. another thing that people just don't say. Mm -hmm. So, see, now, in that same vein, here is a sentence 
that I never thought I would say. A sentence that I definitely have never said out loud. A sentence I've never even thought of. This is a first. This is definitely a first. I have never said this. Oh my God. I like Ted Danson in this. (laughs) I've never said that. Ever. Yeah. I never said that while watching CSI. I never said that while watching Becker or Decker, whatever the hell that show was that yeah. had that had that that had uh, Dax from Deep Space Nine in it. He he did. You know something? Fuck Game of Thrones, man. I don't think I've ever seen an episode of any CSI. Really? How is that even possible? I don't know. Isn't there like a whole CSI network? <laughs> CSI CSI used to really piss me off because it's like, oh, wait a second. We can't show we can't show any nudity. We can't show a nipple. We can't show a naked butt. That would be too much. Now, here's the new episode of CSI. In this episode, a prostitute has her head cut off. Now, let's take the camera inside the wound. Let's go inside her bloody pus-filled neck hole. (laughs) That's fine. Now, that's fine. As you can see, the maggots are eating away at her neck. Yeah. Like, that's okay. That's fine to see. But a nipple, oh my god, that's way too far. Yeah. That always pissed me off. Fuck CSI. But, um... No, that's weird that you've never seen an episode of CSI. A- especially How is that possible? How has life passed me by? <laughs> especially since like literally there's like eight CSIs now. Yeah. CSI, CSI Miami, CSI Las Vegas, CSI Tucson, Arizona, which was actually like a 15 minute show, like adult swim sized. Yeah. Because there's not a lot going on in Tucson, Arizona. Well, that's what made me thought think about it, man. I'm I'm like Ted Danson and CSI. I don't think I've ever seen well, there were a lot of CSIs. He were took any of them over with Ted Danson, the then I realized yeah. that I've never seen one. <laughs> yeah, no, I've seen a couple of I even I have seen a couple of those and I hate CSI. But yeah. I've never I've never been able to say I like Ted Danson in in something. Yeah. I've never been able to say that until I saw The Good Place. I really like this show. Are you saying you don't like this show, Bunny? Man. Really? Yeah, that's like the best I could do is is meh. You know, oh, like like like, cool. like if I was stuck in an airport terminal, I would be glad it was on. Yeah. Okay. I love this show. Bella and I love this show. And and her saying fork all the time was really getting on my nerves. Oh, I love that. Because <laughs> she can't cut because she's in <clears throat> technically heaven. Yeah, it's cute, but tone it down. Now now for for some reason though. Kristen Bell is just one of those people. She's the opposite of most of the people that that I that I wind up talking about. Like there are a lot of people that that just annoy me for no reason at all. Kristen yeah. Bell, for some fucking strange reason, is the exact opposite of that. Yeah, like I just like to see. Well, like I like to see Neil Patrick Harris. I just like to see them. You know. Yeah, they're yeah. Kinda, they're kind of my kids. You yeah, know? like you, you, yeah, you can't hate her. You can hate her husband because he's a jackass. Who's her husband? I might not uh, want to know, but who's her husband? A uh, professional jackass, Dax Shepard. Dax Shepard. I have no idea. Dax Shepard. If you saw his face, you would go, "Oh, that son of a bitch!" But. Yeah. The fact that you don't automatically know him just that says a lot, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that guy. Okay. 
You, he was the non. Was he in Jones? He was the non. He was the non Mexican from the Chips reboot. Oh, okay. I don't think he was. I think it's just because Kristen Bell has been in a lot of stuff that I've liked. Yeah. You know, like, like, uh, fanboys. Yeah. And heroes when it was still kind of okay. Oh, and of course she was in your favorite movie, Disney's Frozen. Uh, was she? I think so. She was yes, one of the voices. He, she was. She was Anna or Elsa or whichever one doesn't have ice powers because my kids were never into that movie. <laughs> okay. She was whichever sister doesn't have ice powers. I think that's Anna. Yeah. I think. I don't know. Do you know, babe? Okay. Uh, no, that's um. Oh fuck! What's his name? What's his name? The one who was in Cat. Galaxy Quest guy. Tim Allen? No. Sigourney no. Weaver? Sam Sam Rockfield. Rockwell. Sam Rockwell. Rockwell. Yeah. No, yeah, that's... he was in Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Yeah. He was in the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy and he based his Zaphoid Beeblebrox on uh then President George W. Bush. And which one was in the Green Mile? Uh Sam Rockwell oh, was in the Green okay. Mile. No, no, no. You're thinking of Michael Clark Duncan. <laughs> no. Uh, no, uh, uh, Dak Shepard is a white guy. I know. I'm looking at his picture right here. Well, yeah, I'm just trying to help you, Jeannie. You're so helpful. Thank you. Oh, oh you're welcome. Yeah. He does look now, like kind of a smug, pretty boy. Yes, yes. He's a, <laughs> he's a, jackass. He's a jackass. He's a professional jackass. Yeah. Now, I... The thing about the good place, yeah, I I, think I'm so. thinking yeah. of calling that that. I, I'm thinking of calling that like my fondness of Kristen Bell and Doogie Hauser and things like that. Um, so this is a this is going to be an important fan moment. If you're a fan, you're going to need to remember this. Okay. Okay. I'm going to call it the Bill Bixby effect. Nice. Okay. Bill Bixby. Yeah. Whenever Bill Big, it didn't make a difference what piece of shit it was. If yeah, Bill whether, Bixby appeared on the screen, you just got happy. Yeah, whether he was he was the Hulk or whether he was a magician. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just, like oh my god, it's Bill Bixby. Bill Bixby. Yeah. So that's it. Kristen Bell and Doogie Hauser are part of the Bill Bixby effect. Nice. The Bill Bixby effect. That's also a, like a band name. Yes. Right. Oh, a friend. A, a friend said something that I spotted as a band name, and I said band name, and I called it so we can use it. Nice. Nice. Good. Weather. Now, weather genocide. Oh, that's amazing. That's and amazing. it's so current. <laughs> it's it's topical. Yeah. You know what would be good for Weather Genocide? To be a cover band, uh, to be a Genesis cover band, but you change all the songs to be about the weather. Oh. Weather Genocide, the weather-themed Genesis cover band. Yeah. Oh, Irma. Irma, don't you lose my number. are really tingling there must be a storm coming yeah yeah oh see i have weather genitals <laughs> weather genitals so that's how i know some people have like bunions or corns that act up in a storm yeah me my genitals uh go crazy whenever there's a big storm or a change in the in the the, the dew point you know yeah does it work a- does it work like a like a um Weather Rock, which is kind of popular in Colorado, and I would bet you Oklahoma too. Yeah, I have. I basically like have if you, like, like if you touch them, it's rain. There. If they're wet, they're rain. Right. It's raining. Yeah, kind yeah. Of. yeah, kind of. Basically, if basically. they're warm, it's hot outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my dick. Okay. 
Yeah. So when you're talking about the show The Good Place, I think the real story here is that somehow, secretly, without anyone noticing, H- uh, NBC has comedy again. Yeah, they secretly because for a while they were like, oh, we can't have comedy on Thursdays anymore. We need to be a serious network. So this night, all drama set in Chicago. (laughs) And then this night, more drama set in Chicago. Yeah. And then this night, we're just going to show five hours of Dateline NBC. Yeah. And then this night will be dedicated to big-time, big-budget sci-fi dramas that will be canceled after a season. I would put this... It felt very much like a throwback to me. To, yes. To, like, Bewitched, or I Dream of Genie, or, you know... Really? I, I felt, I, I felt that it was like a... I, in my mind, I felt that it was like a... Like a like they got the people who made Parks and Rec and gave them a, a a VHS tape of defending your life. Defending your life. I was going to say that it, it is very much defending your life. It's like that version of heaven. Yeah. I think that's one of the reasons why I liked it so much. Yeah. Cuz I just I loved defending your life. And that's what this felt like. Yeah. Yeah. So, so they, it's, so it's a, and, it's a cute show, it's, you and know, it feels but, like but I, I, I was like, wow, he's really raving about it. I'm not quite sure what I'm missing here. <laughs> oh, I love it. So, so, so they, NBC got rid of all of their comedies and then they said, okay, okay. It was slow going at first. Okay. We'll have one comedy on the network and that is it. Okay. Yeah can't have like a bunch of comedy if we're trying to be a serious network guys so just one comedy and a and they didn't even have 100 percent faith in the show they said okay we'll give it like a half a season yeah. not even half a season. We'll give it like 10 episodes and then we'll see we're not expecting a lot of, for this show so that was the yeah. minimum wage workplace comedy superstore <laughs> It's a it's a it's a it's a single camera workplace comedy set in like a retail big box store, yeah. like a Walmart or a Best Buy or something like that. It's not the most original idea in the world, but it has some original writing. It does a great job of explaining what it's like to work in retail. It's got a great cast. It probably has the most diverse cast in existence. Like here's a black guy in a wheelchair. Here's a Jewish person. Here's a Samoan. We'll get like a here's a Mexican woman who's a boss. Here's an Asian gay person. Yeah, it's amazing. It literally is the most diverse cast in the history of anywhere. And a lot of times when I see a cast as diverse as this, there's a part of me that gets all Republican. You know, there's a part of me that secretly gets Republican. And oh, why do you have to have such a diverse cast? I can tell you why. It's because you're trying to to show your liberal bias. <laughs> yeah. Chemicals in the water that turn the friggin' frogs gay. <laughs> but but I understand it in this setting because when yeah. you work in retail, oh my god, it's not like you're just working with a bunch of white people. You know, you do have di- a diverse group of people that you're working with. Yeah. So it makes sense that if you're working like a big box retail store, that you have all of these different types of people mm-hmm. who who are working with you and also Who are um, the people in your neighborhood in your neighborhood in your neighborhood <laughs> sorry well, there's the fact that the boss the show the boss of the store is mark mckinney mark mckinney i love yes, him sans, in the hall yeah sans chicken lady outfit yes yeah. Uh, and I just, I love kids in the hall so much. Yeah. It's great to see him. I would feel the same way if it was like Dave Foley or someone like that. That's one of the reasons why I love news radio so much. Yeah. Yeah. 
Love that he, freaking show. Dave Foley just fairly recently, which could be like two years, um, did a comedy special that was on Netflix. I think and I saw was that. Pretty fucking dark. Yeah, it was depressing because he because because he can't go back to Canada. Yeah, he cannot return back to his country. <laughs> oh man! Yeah, yeah. No, that's some fucked and, up and shit. Like his horrible divorce and shit, and yeah, all kinds of stuff. Like, no, you're the happy one. Yeah, with the fucking puppy dog eyes. Yeah, yeah. You are the Daves I know. You, 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 exactly. You, yeah. you can't go, be going all Rodney Dangerfield on me. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. Because if you give Dave Foley another 20 years, there you go. Yeah. So Superstore was supposed to be like a small mid-season replacement, and then they said, oh, my God. People are actually watching this show. And the reviews all said the same thing that you did about uh, The Good Place. All the reviews said, oh, my God, this feels just like an old NBC sitcom. Yeah. Like, oh, my God, they're, they're finally going back to the comedy that they made famous. Because this feels so much like something that could be right after uh, The Cosby Show or Friends or 30 Rock. It's it's it in feels- one of it's in one of those places for me where like I I don't really have anything bad to say about it. I just didn't like I felt like I've seen it all, you know? I've seen it yeah. already. Yeah. It's really kind of a spin, you know, she's the bad one, everybody's the good one, you know. So her neighbor that she hates is super good instead of being Alice Kravitz. You know what I mean? I think if you got to the so, end So like there's of nothing this... you could point to there's, like there's no little bit that you find amusing that I would not find amusing you know yeah. and yeah. everybody's pretty cool but they're they're I don't care how diverse the cast is it is really really white There's you know? there's yeah there's a part I haven't gotten to it yet, but apparently the end of season one of The Good Place has a shocking cliffhanger that blew everyone away. And there's something that tells me that if you somehow manage to get to the shocking cliffhanger at the end of season one, you might say, okay, well, maybe now you have my attention. It actually turns out to be the bad place and she's queen. (laughs) I'm not 100% sure because I haven't gotten to the ending yet, but I've heard so many people talk about the ending of The Good Place. Yeah. That, and apparently the way that they got Ted Danson and the way that they got whatever her name is, I already forgot her name. Uh, 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 I even wrote it down here somewhere. Yeah. Uh, the, the way that they got all these people to sign in is because while they were pitching the episode to them, they also pitched the ending of season one. And it was that shocking twist ending that made people go, oh, my God, that's amazing. Yes, I will sign up for this show. Well, I am speculating a lot now because now you do have my curiosity. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So with what you have shown me so far of this show. I, I, I think my first instinct is right. The good place is the bad place because really. Why do you believe it's the good place just because they say it's the good place? Yeah. If it's the bad place, wouldn't you tell them that it's a good place? That is a good point. Okay. Now, if you take Kristen Bell as a character, there you and go, Kristen who Bell. she okay. is, all right? Yeah. Didn't they drop her in the middle of hell? Yeah. She is not a good person, so let's just, let's surround her by really good people. Yeah. Those people would drive me insane. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah, like my hell, my hell would be I'm in heaven with a bunch of Christians and Mormons. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, that makes that makes perfect sense to me. 
that would be my hell. My hell would be other Christians' heaven. I, I, that doesn't. That does not mean that that I am going to watch any more of the show, but I might search for spoilers. Yeah, and that's fine. <laughs> but anyway, right now we're talking about Superstore. Okay. Superstore was supposed to be a small mid-season replacement. Then it actually got amazing ratings. So they added more episodes to the first season. And then it got a full season for season two on the regular main roster season. Along with a special Olympic-themed episode as like a companion to the Summer Olympics. And that was a big deal. Yeah. So to go with the big second season of Superstore, they decided, okay, we did one comedy last season. And it was against our best wishes. It was actually a hit. So I think we actually have to make comedy now. Let's make another comedy show to go with Superstore. And that is The Good Place. Yeah. It's not a rating smash, but the reviews are great. So much so that now NBC Must See Comedy is back with a slew of comedies, including Will and Grace, which will once again be a big hit with everyone's mom. Yes. And the second season of Great News, that's a that's a news-themed sitcom that Tina Fey produces. Uh, basically, it's 30 Rock, but 30 Rock fucked CNN. <laughs> it's so weird because it's set in like a cnn type cable newsroom but yeah. you watch it for like you watch it for five minutes and ba- and you have to rub your eyes because it's like okay so this is 30 rock right <laughs> okay so that's that character that's that character holy shit this is 30 rock <laughs> so i really like the show great news not because it's a good or original show because it is not <laughs> it's just i am a huge 30 Rock fan. And this is just 30 Rock again. And then to make it even 30 it's, Rockier, yeah. to make it even 30 Rockier, Tina Fey was in like one episode of season one. And now she's becoming a semi regular for season two. And that's, and that's to me sounds exactly the same reason why people are looking forward to the Orville so much. Yeah. I'm kind of excited about the Orville. It looks great. You know, I'm super excited not about the Orville. A, not that it's not that it's original. It's fucking Star Trek. They do in yeah. Galaxy Quest again. Orville looks more like Star Trek than the new Star Trek looks like Star Trek. Yeah. Yeah. As far as I'm concerned, Orville is the new Star Trek show. Yes. Like, I do not. I do not want to get like, I don't know the CBS streaming service so I can watch the new fucking Star Trek show. No, yeah. fuck that. I'll just watch the Oroville. Cause and that we're, and fucking we're, wonderful. And we're back to buying channels individually again. Yes. Yes, we're, we are. We have come full circle on the yeah. Pope on film. So yeah. Yeah. So you have to get one channel and you get in one channel for what? Five or 10 bucks. Something and, like that. and you're getting that one channel. Because it has one fucking show? Like, yeah. You know? Yeah, that's freaking ridiculous. Like, I was really into Dexter. I fucking love Dexter. You know? Until the end. And, like, <laughs> until the end. And that whole sister thing. Yeah. I mean, he's a psychopath, but that's too far. <laughs> I love I love Dexter so much because it's such a good show and it's an amazing show and it's a wonderful show. And then you get to the ending and you go, wait a second. That ending sucked. Yeah. I now need to go back and look at everything else through this that episode sucks lens. Yeah. I need to reevaluate my love of the show. That's how bad the last episode was. <laughs> yes. <laughs> It was so bad that now you go back to the show and go, oh, wait a second. A lot of this sucked. Yeah. It wasn't until I saw that last episode that I realized, oh, shit. No, Dexter is just okay. Mm-hmm. It's magical. It's a magical last episode. <laughs> it's fucking magical. It makes you rethink your entire love of the show. 
Right. I'm just saying that I'm just saying that it did not justify to me a reason for purchasing Showtime. You know? I, uh, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. yes, the or how did we get here? The Orville and before the Orville. Um the the new Star Trek show. That's how we got here. Right, but what came before that? Um, you were talking. Were you were you talking about the Good Place? Yes. Because no, no, you were talking about the new show. Yes, yes, it's called Great News. Yes, it looks exactly it looks exactly like Thirty Rock, and I'm just a big Thirty Rock fan. Yeah. Anyway, and I good... related that to to the Orville because it's the same yeah. thing. It, it yeah. looks like it's going to be awesome for Star Trek fans. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it and it, it, again. Our podcast is so ahead of the times. I read an article in um, Rolling Stone magazine, and it talks about how, hey, guys, guess what? Reboots are coming to TV now. <laughs> I'm like, bitch, that was like two episodes ago. Yeah. Yeah. Again, it's obvious that Rolling Stone magazine listened to our podcast and decided to write their magazine about it. Obviously, and you and you busted the New York Times first. Yep. Now everybody's busting yep. the New York Times. Yeah, that's not fair. Yeah. Where's our credit? Exactly. Okay. We're coming up. Me? We're coming up on having done this podcast for three years. Years. Three, three years. years. Yeah. Just farting in the wind. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so I like the Good Earth. I think it's I think it's cute and funny. Kristen Bell plays Eleanor. Ted Danson plays Michael. And Bella loved the show. At first, she's like, "What are you watching?" It's a show. It's called The Good Earth. Well, I'm watching it for the podcast. It's a cute show. I think you'll like it. And she thought it was okay. But when she learned that Ted Danson played Michael, she freaked out because apparently there's an Archangel Michael in Supernatural. Yeah. Bella loves Supernatural now. It's really sweet because Bella and uh, Natasha don't always get along very well. But yeah. oh my god, they have one thing in common. It's like a breakfast at Tiffany's. Yes. <laughs> Natasha and Bella love their freaking Supernatural. I love the the ethics professor, uh, Cheedy. Yeah. He's too good, and he's trying to help Eleanor. But of course, the person who steals the show is Janet, who pops up. And I love Janet because basically she's the computer from other space. Is she? In my mind, she is. Okay, which she's one's Janet same... again? Janet is is like the 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 Alexa. She pops up and can answer any question. She's oh, like okay, the yes, yes, yes. No, yeah. she steals the show. I love her. She <laughs> reminds me of other space. Her, re her reprogramming was fun. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I love this. Oh, that was great. That was great. Anyway, I love this show. I love it more than than um, Bunny does. Obviously, it's a cute show. It is cute. Uh, I'm I'm going airplane worthy. I'm going airplane worthy. And and look. King of Queens was air, air airport worthy. Okay. Um the the that Jim Belushi show not so much. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So the airport category does not make it bad. Yeah. Yeah, it's not necessarily horrible. Yeah. Anyway, that is it for homework this week. And I honestacularly hope that your hearts, minds, and paper cuts have all been suitably opened. Ah, uh, but wait a second. Don't just assume you're getting out of here so easily, amigo. Amigo. Your amigo. Okay. Uh, don't I, I, I have another shot here. I'm sorry. Okay. I have another no, okay. shot here. But, like, it's really good for an airport. But I would be really pissed off if this was playing at my death. At your what? At my death. Like I'm dying and the good place is on. So not like a hospital show. 
Is that um, what you're saying? Yes. 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 Not like a hospital me. show. I don't know. I've seen some horrible things in a hospital. I'm so desperate to not focus on the hospital. I yeah. saw a John Wayne movie once in a hospital, and I fucking hate John Wayne, but I'm so desperate to not focus on my dying grandfather. I that I'm like, ooh, John Wayne. Let me watch this. When I was when I was in the hospital that time, like Family Feud was the best thing on. A lot, like often. It was Family Feud, and I watched that shit. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. We have struggled, <laughs> and it's time for that struggle to stop. Nice. Thank you. Uh, yes, thank you, Bunny. Thank you, Bunny, for that. Don't forget next week's homework assignment. And next week, we are talking. We're finally biting the bullet. We are talking about my all-time favorite New Zealand comedy folk rock duo. Okay. Flight of the Concords. Okay. They released two albums. They had a radio show in New Zealand, and they had a two-season HBO series. But what we will be doing is we will be watching their pre-HBO series TV special called Flight of the Concords, A Texas Odyssey. <laughs> so, oh, so before man. they became huge in America, before they became huge with their own show on HBO, they were invited to whatever it's called, the SXSW, whatever it's called, festival in Texas. So they flew to Texas to do the show and turned it into a hour-long TV special for New Zealand television. And that is this show. Before they became famous in America, before they had their HBO show, I love Flight of the Concord so cool. much. I love these two men so much. One of them became an Oscar winner for his music in the Muppet movie, and the other one be is slowly but surely becoming that guy who's in everything. <laughs> But this is way before they became famous and all of that. So uh, it's on YouTube. Flight of the Concords, a Texas Odyssey, a Texas Odyssey. I'll shoot you the link, Bunny. It's cute. It's adorable. I haven't. It, it, it's great to see these really famous people before they were famous. Yeah. You know, when they're going to Texas for the first time, they have no idea about America. It's adorable. So this is going to be cute. <laughs> And uh, so that's next week. Join us, won't you, for more homework with the Pope on Film podcast. Thank you. Class dismissed. Yeah.